Our goal here, again, our goal is to review general chemistry concepts that are really fundamental to organic chemistry. And we're starting with the concept of the Lewis structure. And we just learned about the concept of constitutional isomers, which are molecules that have the same formula, but different connectivity. Our first job as new organic chemists is going to be to learn how to draw as many constitutional isomers for a molecular formula as possible. So that involves drawing a lot of Lewis structures, which you know from general chemistry can be pretty tedious. So instead of going through all of the rules that you learned in Gen Chem, step one, count all the valence electrons, step two, arrange all the atoms with single bonds, whatever comes next, we are going to learn a, a faster way of drawing Lewis structures than what you were taught in general chemistry. And it, it's, um, I don't want anybody to get disgruntled. This fast method that we have for drawing organic molecules only works for organic molecules. So it's not something that you could have been taught in general chemistry because in general chemistry, you were learning how to draw Lewis structures for every single possible type of molecule. So uh, what we're gonna look at are the bonding trends of the atoms that are commonly found in organic molecules. And I wanna emphasize that these are trends. These are not rules. These are just trends. So this is going to be like a trick that we use to help us quickly draw Lewis structures for organic molecules. But there are gonna be times when we have to think back to our understanding of general chemistry and apply actual uh, rules. So what we know about the atoms that are commonly found in organic chemistry, let's, let's make a list of what those atoms are. Obviously we have carbon and we have hydrogen. We also often see oxygen, sulfur, which is oxygen's you know, cousin, nitrogen, and then the halogens, typically chlorine, bromine, and fluorine. So those are the atoms that we, we typically see in our molecules. And we're gonna look at the trends in which those uh, atoms like to bond. So hydrogen we're gonna start with because it's the e easiest. Hydrogen likes to just form one single bond, which is what we're gonna represent like just like that. That, that's all that hydrogen is capable of doing because it cannot follow the octet rule because it's too small. So next we're gonna look, the next one we're gonna look at are the halogens because they're pretty similar to hydrogen. In organic chemistry, we use the letter X to represent all halogens. We'll make a note of that in just a second. The halogens also like to form one single bond, just like hydrogen. The only difference with them is that they like to have three lone pairs of electrons around them. So X again is our abbreviation for halogens, chlorine, bromine, fluorine and iodine, even though we don't see iodine very often. So next up for our trends, we're gonna go with carbon because carbon is very common. Carbon likes to form four bonds and typically it is forming four single bonds, but it could form four bonds in a variety of different ways, like two single bonds and one double bond or it could also form two double bonds, or it could form one single bond and a triple bond. All of these are different iterations of four bonds. One, two, three, four bonds. One, two, three, four bonds. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's no particular reason that I'm drawing the bonds in carbon in the particular way that I have, like why I'm shifting from a T-shape to a Y-shape to a straight line. There's, there's no reason for that. That's just how I like to draw them. So our next atom that we're gonna focus on is nitrogen. Nitrogen likes to form three bonds and have one lone pair on the central, on the nitrogen atom. And just like carbon, there's a variety of ways that we could see those three bonds for nitrogen. We could see three single bonds, we could see a single bond with a double bond, or we could see just one triple bond. And then last but not least, we have oxygen and sulfur. Oxygen and sulfur like to form two bonds and have two lone pairs. And that could either be two single bonds or it could be one double bond. And then we're gonna make a note on here, sulfur is the same as oxygen. 
in terms of its bonding. And phosphorus is the same as nitrogen in terms of its bonding as well, if you happen to encounter it, but it's not, um, it's not very common. So how are we gonna use these trends to help us avoid Lewis structure? Let's take a look at that on this next problem. Draw all the constitutional isomers of the molecule with the formula C2H7N. So we're gonna use these bonding trends rather than use the rules that you learned in Gen Chem. We're gonna use these bonding trends to help us really quickly come up with all the constitutional isomers for this molecule. Now, when we approach this, I want you to take uh, keep a couple things in mind. Number one, what we're going to do first is make what we call a skeleton, or sometimes we call it a backbone, of all of the atoms that are not hydrogen. Everything except hydrogen. The reason that we're going to exclude hydrogen from the skeleton is because of the way hydrogen bonds, let's go back, because of the way hydrogen bonds, or it only forms one single bond, hydrogen always needs to be on the outside of a molecule. It can never be on the inside. And if that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, just hold on to that because when we start looking at a structure, outside versus inside is gonna become more clear. So we're gonna make a skeleton or a backbone of everything except for the hydrogen. And we are going to make as many skeletons as possible. So we are going to repeat Step one, making as many skeletons as possible until uh, we have no new um, no new versions of the molecule. And as we do this, we're going to keep in mind that direction doesn't matter. And that probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Just write it down and then we'll talk about it. Direction doesn't matter. And once we get all of our skeletons built, then we are going to come back along and add hydrogens to the skeleton. So let's go through that because you probably, right now, you probably have a lot of questions, more questions than answers. So what we're gonna do is focus first on everything except for the hydrogens. For the molecule that we're looking at, C2H7N, we are gonna start by focusing on two carbons and one nitrogen. That's going to be the component of our skeleton or our backbone. And so we're going to start by drawing, just drawing and connecting the two carbons to the nitrogen. There's one option of how we could build the skeleton or the backbone for this molecule. Here's another option, carbon, nitrogen, carbon, like that. So there, there's two possible skeletons. Um, let's talk about, remember, direction doesn't matter. Let's talk about that. So what that means is that the direction that we connect these atoms, and by direction, I mean left to right, or right to left, or up and down, or around a corner, none of that matters. So what we have drawn here, carbon, carbon, nitrogen, is exactly the same as drawing carbon, carbon, nitrogen with a bend, or drawing carbon, carbon, nitrogen up and down, or drawing carbon, carbon, nitrogen from left to right instead of right to left, or maybe like this. All of these are exactly the same. I'm going, I'm going to, um, I'm going to erase this guy for just a second. So all of, of these representations that we have here are exactly the same. Direction doesn't matter. All that matters is connectivity. Connectivity is what matters. So in these, we have one carbon attached to one carbon attached to one nitrogen. One carbon attached to a carbon attached to a nitrogen. A carbon to a carbon to a nitrogen. A carbon to a carbon to a nitrogen. Direction doesn't matter. All that matters is the connectivity, the order in which the atoms are connected to each other. So let's go back to 
our other possible skeleton, a carbon to a nitrogen to a carbon, which is unique. That's a different type of connectivity. And again, direction won't matter, so it's not going to matter if we, even if we go like this, um, a carbon to a nitrogen to a carbon is the same no matter how you twist it or turn it or shape it or organize it or whatever. So there is our skeleton, and there are no other ways for us to arrange the carbon and nitrogen atoms that would have different connectivity. We can draw them in different directions, but we cannot draw them with a different connectivity. So now what we are going to do is go along and fill in hydrogens, the seven hydrogens that we have in this molecule, in a way that gives every atom its common bonding trend. So for carbon, we see that carbon likes to have four bonds. So right now, when we are looking at our first carbon right here, this carbon only has one bond. So let's give it three more so that now it has four. And our second carbon over, this carbon only has two bonds right now. So let's give it two more. And let's do the same for our other molecule. Carbon on the left only has one bond, so let's give it three more bonds. And carbon on the right also only has one bond, so let's give it three more bonds. And then let, let's look back to our common bonding trends. Our other molecule, or other atom in the molecule is nitrogen. Nitrogen likes to have three bonds and one lone pair. So this nitrogen has one bond, let's give it two more bonds, and let's give it its lone pair. And our other nitrogen, it has two bonds, so let's give it one more and give it its lone pair. Is it really that easy? Like, did we actually do it? Let's count up our atoms. We have two carbons, one nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two carbons, one nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are both good, valid structures of C2H7N with the um, with different connectivity and the correct uh, molecular formula.